Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So some people may know that I'm a fan of the Game of Thrones. It's an excellent show. It's very entertaining. It's set in the Middle Ages and it features kings and queens battling it out to gain control over a kingdom. And there's a throne that all these people are aspiring to claim. So the show is very entertaining. But for this video, what I want to do is talk about one of the characters in particular and use that character to make a bigger point about the white savior syndrome, white liberals, and a wide range of other related topics. So there's this character, you know, called the Mother of Dragons. This character gradually gains control over various territories by liberating the slaves in exchange for them joining her in her quest to take this throne. And, you know, there's a one of the groups that she takes over is, you know, these uh, eunuchs. It's like an army of eunuchs called the Unsullied. And people know what eunuchs are. They are men who have been castrated uh, and who are servants to another person. So you have these, these um, eunuchs that serve her and you have all these other people who have joined her in this, this quest in exchange for their freedom. It's important to note that she is a white character. You know, she's very pale, you know, has blonde hair, very light blonde hair. And most of the people who come under her dominion and control are people of color. You know, some of them have been referred to as savages on this uh, show. And I think that there is a lesson deep within that, this story, and I want to talk about that lesson. So this woman, as she goes to these different kingdoms that are primarily people of color, and she gives them their freedom and all that kind of stuff, they celebrate her, you know, they begin to essentially idolize her. Um, you know, when she comes to save one group of people, they refer to her as mother, and they're literally holding her up holding her up and as she goes through a crowd and they're reaching out and touching her like she's some kind of savior and I think that there are so many lessons that are in that story and first of all I'll just deal with the white savior syndrome so here you have all these people of color all these people of color who are looking up to this woman as some great liberator instead of fighting to liberate themselves. They are celebrating and idolizing this white woman and viewing her as their great liberator. And she does in fact help liberate them, you know, by conquering their rulers and stuff like that and killing their rulers and, you know, putting them under her dominion and stuff like that. But in exchange for that, not only do they give her loyalty, but they begin to idolize her and view her as a savior. And I think that's one of the problems with Hollywood. You know, often they depict some liberal white person as the savior of people of color instead of the people of color being their own saviors, being their own agents of change, being their own uh, people to mark and control their own destiny. Instead of that, you have some white savior that comes in and rescues them. And this is a prime example of that. So that's the first thing. I mean, you've seen examples of this in the past, like, you know, Tarzan, you know, he comes into Africa, you know, continent that they depict as savage, just like they depict the people in this show, uh, these people of color as savage. And you had this white man come in there and he, has dominion over the jungle and the animals and he has power and he rescues these these black people from themselves and that's basically what you have in this this story Game of Thrones with respect to this one character also another thing that's, uh, that you can reflect on is the fact that just like this character you know this person who's supposed to be some liberator of these people of color you know many times some white liberals function just the way this woman is functioning. 
So in exchange for, you know, these people being quote unquote liberated, this woman is getting power. She's getting power over these people because they look at her as some white savior. And then also she's acquiring more power and she's essentially using these people of color in order to fulfill some political objective that she has for herself, a self-centered type of political objective, which is to seize control over that throne, to gain power. And the same is true for some of these liberals today. You know, they will come to the black community when it's time for an election. When there's a campaign going on, they come to the black community, they go to the black churches and give their speeches to the black people. They try to speak in the vernacular of the people, just like this character. She goes to these different places and she knows these different languages and she tries to get in tune with the people for her own political purpose, just like these liberals come to the black community trying to speak the way black people speak. You know, you got Hillary Clinton speaking with a Southern draw and stuff like that when she's with black people. You know, going to the church, you know, doing trying to do Negro dances and stuff like that in order to appeal to black people. But unfortunately, with a lot of these politicians, and I'm not just talking about Hillary, I'm talking about many of these so-called white liberal politicians, after the election is over with, you can't find these people. After the election is over with, they're not there fighting on your behalf after they have uh, received your vote. So that's the first thing. And then also, at the end of the day in this power struggle, you know, after using these people of color to obtain power, they make sure that they're on top. Like, despite the fact that they are benefiting and helping out these people of color, at the end of the day, that person, that mother of dragons, for instance, she ends up on top. And the same is true when you look at the white liberal, you know, and I'm just using it as a metaphor. I'm not saying this applies to all white liberals. You know, there are plenty that are genuine and concerned and all that stuff. But for many of them, it's all about power. At the end of the day, you know, despite, you know, them doing some things that are beneficial to people of color, at the end of the day, that white liberal is on top. At the end of the day, that white liberal is in a dominant, controlling, and powerful position. And black people are used as the means by which they acquire that position. People of color are used as a means by which these some of these white liberals can acquire power. And the same is true here. And, you know, another thing that's important to note is that this character appoints you know people of color to different positions of influence like she has this black eunuch who is appointed to be like the general over the army and she also has this uh black assistant well person of color you know I, I can't say that these people are necessarily black but they are people of color so she has this woman of color who serves as like a, a diplomat and she's a translator when this mother of dragons goes to these different places, you know, because this woman speaks all these different languages. So these people of color are prom promoted to these high positions, but at the end of the day, they don't have the ultimate power. At the end of the day, they are still second fiddle to this white woman instead of being in control over their destiny. And I think that a lot of times that's true in this time with how these white liberals, some of them deal with black people. They promote black people to these token positions of influence to make them feel as if they are um, gaining something. But at the end of the day, that white liberal is still on top. At the end of the day, he or she is still in the dominant position. You know, all you got to do is look at it, like how dedicated black people are. And I mean, we, you have black people that are promoted to these different committee positions in the Democratic Party, you know, because of their loyalty and stuff like that. But when you look at it at the end of the day, you know, the power is in the hands for the most part of white liberals, even though, you know, black people may have some 
token influence within that party. And, you know, I had to deal with one other thing before I move on, and that's the, you know, the lesser of two evils scenario, which is like a, a horrible scenario that black people are put in and people of color are put in. Like, in the story, these people are fleeing brutal slave masters. And they have this woman, you know, despite her political objectives, she is trying to liberate them in some degree. So when she, they have to choose between the two, obviously they're going to go with the mother of dragons who's trying to free them. And the same is true, like, when it comes to politics in America. Like, when you look at these Republicans and their open hostility toward people of color, and then when you look at this liberal, it's, it's a lesser of two evils. But at the end of the day, even though you're going to the lesser of two evils, that lesser of two evils still has power and dominion over you. And that lesser of two evils, like if you're in that kind of situation, you're not, you don't have much room to negotiate when you're in that kind of situation. So, I mean, it would be better if the people of color could chart their own way instead of being dependent on either the liberal or the conservative. And, you know, my whole point about, you know, her appointing these people is just that, you know, a liberal will use tokens just like the conservative uses token and put them in a certain position of power. And one thing that's very important to understand is like these people, often people think that these, these liberals or this particular character is motivated by some genuine compassion or genuine mercy towards her fellow human beings and love towards fellow human beings. But at the end of the day, when you boil it down, it all boils down to the fact that this woman is using these people as a means to an end. And that end is power. That end is seizing that throne. Just like, you know, these people may be giving you certain crumbs to make you feel like they care about you. But at the end of the day, it's all about seizing power and, you know, placating so-called minorities is one means of doing so, of seizing power. Because in this country, we know that, um, for instance, the Democrats, they can't win an election with just the white vote alone. They are completely dependent on black voters in order to win in national elections or even like statewide elections. They need black voters. So they have to use us just like this queen, uh, the mother of dragons is using these people of color because her, her own people have been wiped out. So she has to go to these other people and essentially use them and still reign over them just like this white Democrat you know, knowing that few there are less white people in the Democratic Party compared to the Republican Party, knowing that that's the case, they have to throw out crumbs to um, these so-called minorities in order to seize political power. And, you know, another thing that I wanted to point out, hopefully I have enough time, and that's this, this white standard of beauty. Like in this... Uh, Game of Thrones, like these people of color fawn over this mother of dragons. Like they view her as so beautiful. Like they featured a whole bunch of uh, people of color, like trying to get with this woman. I mean, and she is an attractive woman, but they make it seem as if she's like all that. Like, you know, she's the center of the universe. Like you have a couple of characters who are characters of color you know, in a big scheme of things, trying to be with her. Like this black guy tried to be with her. And then this guy is similar. Like she was first with an Arab type of guy. And then, you know, so again, the bottom line is this. You have people of color lusting after this white woman. Again, perpetuating this idea that whiteness is the standard of beauty. And we see that today. I mean, I can't even, I don't even need to go on about that. You know, there are plenty of examples Um with respect to that. And then <laughs> I don't have enough time. There's one other point that I wanted to make and that's with respect to feminism. Uh, but I may have to do that in another video. Peace.